Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to one of the European Union side events at uh, COP28. Uh, my name is Marko Tsatsanovsky. I was given a task uh, today to moderate this event that will last approximately one hour. Uh, this event has been organized by uh, DGGRC and the Health uh, and Digital Executive Agency, uh, together with partner director generals of the European Commission, like Energy, Clima, Research and Innovation, and Research and uh, Innovation. Uh, today's uh, theme uh, um, uh, is the research and innovation for the decarbonization of buildings. Um, as uh, most of you already know, the decarbonization of the building sector is one of the main area of action in uh, EU Green Deal energy policies. Uh, the European Union and the European Commission have adopted several policies and initiatives to meet these objectives, uh, such as the European Performance of Buildings Directive, the Renovation Wave, and the EU strategy to reduce uh, gas uh, consumption. These initiatives cover both renovation of existing buildings and the construction of new zero emission buildings. The, the session today uh, will present the key research results uh, from two EU-funded research and innovation projects that are managed by the European Health and Digital Executive Agency, or shortly HADEA. And uh, later on, we will also hear from our DGGRC science team that will present the current trends in policy research related to mitigation and decarbonization of the of the building sector i would like to invite uh, uh, our first uh, speaker today this is uh, miss victoria petrova uh, victoria is head of unit of uh, industry unit of hadea and uh, victoria it's a uh, Pleasure to have you with us today, and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Marco, and hello, colleagues and um, audience. Um, without waiting any longer, I would propose to share the presentation. Thank you very much indeed for that. And I have been five minutes, so it's a challenge to speak within this limited uh, amount of time. Uh, just to give you an indication why Hadea is part uh, cooperating with GRC, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to this afternoon session, as Marco also introduced it, jointly organized between Joint Research Center of the European Commission, Hadea, and also Director Generals uh, that take care of building and construction policy. Uh, so why are we here? So uh, in uh, the health and digital executive agency, we have the so-called industry unit that I'm heading. I had the pleasure to uh, have a team of 50 very professional and experienced colleagues who are working on program and project management. And a very important part of our remit is related to uh, construction and uh, buildings. So just to give you an indication what Hadea is, for those who don't know us, so we have, we Hadea, we have been created on 1st of April, 2021, in the aftermath of uh, COVID-19 global pandemic. And we work to implement programs, initiatives that support different areas related to the health, as obviously digital, and not only, but also industry and space. We closely cooperate with directors general such as uh, Connect, DEFI, so Defense and uh, Space, HERA for uh, Health Preparedness um, Team, Grow, Internal Market, Research and Innovation, and Sante, so Health. Uh, Director General Department of Commission. Uh, we have been set to address ambitious targets, ambitious actions to rebuild a post-COVID-19 uh, Europe in the heart with greener, more digital, more resilient and better fit for the future Europe. Next slide, slide please. So what we do, we work uh, in different areas uh, I would quote some of them just for you to understand why we are here and what we're doing. So we work on manufacturing technologies, circular industries, low carbon and clean industries, but also advanced materials, artificial intelligence and robotics and human centricities in digitalized 
manufacturing. So today uh, you will have an opportunity to familiarize with two of our legacy, meaning Horizon 2020 projects. One is called Cultural E and the other is Beam Speed, who will present the exceptional research and innovation results in the area of decarbonizing of buildings. Next slide, please. So what is Horizon Europe? Uh, well, Horizon Europe, to start with, is the successor of Horizon 2020. That is a framework program. Uh, so Horizon is uh, budgeted with almost 100 billion, 95.5 billion of euros to support research and innovation. It tackles climate change, helps to achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and boosts the EU competitiveness and growth. The program facilitates collaboration and strengthens the impact of research and innovation in developing, supporting and implementing EU policies. So basically it's research and innovation in support of political options. It creates jobs, fully engaged in EU talent pool, boosts also economic growth, promotes industrial competitiveness and optimizes in investment impact within a strengthened European research area. Next slide, please. So what do we do concretely? So if you look for funding, you have a bright idea in the area of buildings and construction or circularity. You need just to go to the funding and tender portal, the European Union, and you tap cluster for Horizon Europe. And there you will find we have still open calls that go till February 2024. And uh, it is really important to know a couple of very pragmatic things. I use these opportunities to remind them. The proposals, the applications are to be submitted in English. It makes everybody's life much simpler, I can assure you. And you need to have at least three partners unless the topic states otherwise. So I invite you to very carefully read the instructions before submitting. But the most important is what we focus at. You are seeing in the slide the different calls that are there and you could really scroll the streams dive into them in order to see how you could support the europe to be globally more attractive more dynamic data agile economy that is important including for the building sector in order to organize the processes that are supporting the construction but also in the open strategic autonomy uh in the uh, circular and greener economy. Next slide, please. So as I have mentioned, uh, if you want to know where and how you could benefit of your funding, you go to this wonderful uh, grants and tender, uh, funding and tender portal, and you will see whether you may have a funding opportunity up to 100 persons, that would be wonderful. Or you could have a little bit less, maybe 70 persons, but that's still a great uh, share that you could get uh, supported with. Uh, if you have right ideas that you want to bring to the benefit of the European uh, citizens. And we fund also actions not only on the technologies, but we fund also actions that are so-called coordination and support actions that help the community to build, to uh, cooperate and set new uh, standards and work together. Next slide, please. We are also always looking for experts who will evaluate our uh, proposals that we receive. So the process is totally independent and transparent. We are not the ones that evaluate. We facilitate the evaluation. External independent experts do. So if you wish to apply, you're always welcome to post your CV on the portal. You never know, in our audience, we might have great specialists in the different technological uh, areas of greening. So it's important to make the whole call there. And you know that you can also act by, by being an expert in Horizon Projects Evaluation. Next slide, please. And here you have the most important contact points for the European Commission. This means I'm soon going to say thank you very much for your attention and hand the floor back to Marco. And thank you again for uh, staying with us for this 
important session that brings concrete insight on how we are making Europe greener. Mark, back to you. Thank you very much, uh, Victoria, for this uh, precise uh, and resource resourceful presentation about funding opportunities uh, of the European Union and of course presenting uh, Hadea to uh, to our audience our second uh, speaker today is uh, Anna Maria Belleri as mentioned previously by Victoria uh, there are two projects that we will present today the first one is cultural e climate and cultural based solutions for plus energy uh, buildings uh, Anna Maria comes uh, from Italy, representing Academia Europea di Bolzano. Anna Maria, it's a great pleasure to see you again. Please, uh, we look forward to hearing more about culturally. Thank you, Marco, and uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so, a few data about the project. Meanwhile, the slides are uh, uploading. Uh, the project was funded under Horizon 2020 program uh, with around uh, 8 million euros budget. Uh, we are uh, 17 partners, both including research institutions, industry partners, and investors in building construction. The project started in 2019 and is expected to end uh, in uh, one year, more or less. Um, so we'll start uh, with uh, the first slide. Next, please. Um, so few positive energy buildings have uh, been developed uh, since uh, the 1994, when the first uh, plus energy house uh, uh, prototype was built. And from this very prototype uh, until uh, um, a viable and affordable concept. The path has been uh, longer and culturally project aims at uh, um, fulfilling the latest steps uh, and uh, make uh, plus energy building, uh, multifamily building become the new uh, market standard for, for this typology. Um, and we aim at delivering uh, for demonstration cases uh, that uh, will demonstrate it. Next slide. Uh, so this will make um, plus energy buildings uh, part, a key part of the um, building stock, the decarbonization, since they can con compensate for the negative energy balance uh, that, uh, for example, older or, or historic buildings uh, have because they cannot be fully renovated or reach the zero energy state. And also, um, they can contribute to reduce the stress on uh, on the energy grid. Next, um, what we mean by plus energy buildings? They are energy efficient buildings that produce more energy than they consume over a time span of one year. Of one year, but we also. Um, believe that uh, the positive energy balance uh, shall be reached by um, also releasing the lowest uh, greenhouse gas emission possible, ensuring uh, a good dynamic match between uh, uh, the production and the consumption of energy, and also providing accessible, uh, comfortable and healthy indoor environments. So next slide. In this uh, perspective, uh, culturally project uh, as, uh, is based on uh, four main pillars, which we do believe are key to design uh, PEBS. Uh, first pillar is, uh, fir first point is to put the users at the center, understanding their need and guiding them towards better energy practices. Then we define uh, viable and tailorable technology concepts integrated uh, the climate and cultural approach encompassing both uh, building configuration, technology selection, and user system interaction. And then we will be defining viable business model in order to uh, include uh, uh, some attractive financial mechanism and uh, um, as well as um, co-benefit uh, assessment. Next. Um, we started uh, by listening to the residents' voices and understanding which are the social practices 
and the circumstances that uh, can create conflict uh, with uh, with energy consumption, such as, for example, opening window just uh, for the need to connect with the other nature or uh, increase temperature set points to please uh, visitors. And uh, we try to design the technologies um, uh, in order to help the users to fulfill these needs in the most uh, energy efficient way. Uh, next slide. Key, um, so we also analyzed the thermal comfort expectations and uh, realized that users uh, um, in different climate have different, uh, very different preferences in terms of optimal uh, indoor temperature and that also the higher the indoor temperatures, um, um, so higher indoor temperature can be tolerated if uh, the air velocity into the room uh, is increased. And starting from this consideration, uh, next slide please, we developed uh, some key technology concept uh, and brought them for, from uh, TRL5 to TRL7. Um, in collaboration with uh, industry parts, partners in order to better manage the interaction uh, uh, with the users and meet their needs and expectation, as well as to manage the interaction uh, between the building uh, and the energy grid and the mobility infrastructure. And in the next slide, I will briefly showcase uh, this technology. So next slide, the active uh, window system is a modular window with different configuration that can adapt uh, easily to different climates and also be uh, allows for an easy and quick installation. The external cavity um, can be uh, ventilated in order to either preheat the air entering to, into the room during colder periods and or uh, to reduce the solar gains uh, um, through the window uh, during the hotter periods. Next. As we saw um, in the previous slides, increasing the air movement uh, into the room can be a particularly efficient strategy to save cooling energy, since uh, the users can feel uh, comfortable up to 30 degrees thanks to the increase of uh, air velocity. So. We would like to exploit uh, uh, this and, uh, and develop the smart ceiling fans that has a remote controller able to dialogue uh, with the HVAC system and manage its uh, rotation uh, speed and um, activation uh, depending on, uh, on the indoor condition and the user presence into the house. And uh, this uh, can save up to 60% of uh, cooling energy in the Mediterranean residential buildings, but uh, can be can completely replace the, the cooling system in uh, northern countries, um, in residential buildings located in northern countries. Um, next slide. The packet heat pump uh, system is an all-in-one uh, compact system that delivers uh, heating, domestic hot water and ventilation, and is able to reach high energy efficiency thanks to a data-driven control optimization and uh, lo load shifting capacity, and also can deliver uh, free summer cooling uh, thanks to the recovery of, uh, of heat. And next slide. And finally, all the building systems are supervised by a house management system, which uh, enables uh, user-centered uh, services, lever uh, leveraging on data coming from uh, building monitoring, but also from web services and uh, also other, other buildings, uh, thanks to the cloud connection. Next slide. We analyzed and uh, optimized this set of building uh, technologies, um, looking at both uh, energy efficiency, but also economic and environmental impact. And we um, 
uh, simulated their application on two building uh, archetypes representing a eight story building apartment building and a three story apartment building in uh, four uh, um, different climates representing um, our uh, uh, climatic and cultural uh, geoclusters. Uh, all the results are available on our website, and uh, in the next uh, few slides, I will show a few examples of the results and the main uh, and the main outcomes. So next, please. Um, first of all, a uh, positive energy balance uh, um, is. Uh, more difficult to reach in high-rise building, as, as you might uh, imagine, uh, because of the limited uh, roof area, um, the uh, higher cost of uh, PV installation on the facade, and also the higher number of households and the higher energy consumption. And most of the, um, in, in general, most of the uh, electricity consumption, so over 40% of the energy, as we can see in the pie charts, is due to um, electrical household appliances. Um, while uh, high efficiency can be reached by the building system for delivering uh, heating, cooling, uh, lighting, and domestic hot water. Uh, the construction costs uh, range between uh, 2,000 and 3,700 uh, uh, euros per meter square, which uh, means uh, that uh, we have an extra cost uh, of more uh, between 200 and 300 euros uh, per meter square compared to net zero energy buildings. Next slide. If we look at the exchanges that uh, these buildings have uh, with the grid, the exported energy amount is uh, still very low because um, feeding energy into grid uh, nowadays results is in uh, low profits or even loss of profits. And therefore um, the self-consumed energy has a higher value and uh, so the building system are designed in order to maximize this and we reached the, um, depending on the climate context, between 50 and 70 percent uh, of um, and, uh, seven, 50 and 70 percent of self consumption rate, meaning that uh, um, up to 70 percent of the energy consumed by the building can be served directly by the PV system installed uh, on the roof. Next slide, we also look at the environmental payback of the technology solution, which is uh, the time required to recap the total uh, expended uh, embodied uh, CO2 through building operation carbon uh, positivity. And uh, here we see that um, the Construct, construction and material aspects, uh, which impacts uh, the embodied energy, can significantly influence the overall life cycle impact. And we also saw that PV modules are the main uh, uh, contributor of this embodied energy uh, among the building systems. Uh, on the other side, PV systems are needed in order to uh, offset uh, the, the payback and the initial climate investment. So um, in the design of uh, this kind of building, it is needed a sort of uh, trade-off uh, between the two. And also the payback period are uh, primarily affected by initial carbon intensity of electricity generation. Um, so we compare um, cases in Italy and Germany with uh, French and Norwegian cases and uh, the national electricity mix of this country is uh, quite different. Um, in Italy and Germany, for example, uh, um, a kilowatt hour of electricity um, releases for the production of a one kilowatt hour of electricity, 0. Uh, to 28 um, kilogram of CO2 equivalent are released uh, while in the French and the Norwegian case uh, we, 
uh, this value goes down to 0.06 or, or 0.03 in the Norwegian case because um, uh, yeah, Norwegian uh, um, electricity generation is mostly based on hydropower, while the French one on uh, nuclear uh, system, uh, while Italian and German are still uh, um, are, are more carbon intense. And uh, um, on this side, uh, the technology solutions uh, in Italy and Germany reached the payback by 2050, while uh, slower trends are shown in, um, in the French and the Norwegian case. Um, I'm going to conclude with a final slide. Next, please. So um, the main uh, here are the main lessons learned that uh, we uh, gained so far in the project, but uh, we will have more uh, uh, once uh, the demo construction will be completed and we will be able to run post-occupancy evaluation on that. Um, most of the electri electrical consumption is due to electrical household appliances, so it is. Um, in, and it will be very important to empower users in uh, reducing uh, this uh, um, this part of uh, energy consumption. Um, understanding social and cultural practices can play a role in this and uh, lead to more energy efficient buildings. Um, also, uh, space cooling demand uh, in multi-residential buildings in uh, continental uh, subarctic climates could be um, avoided by using uh, smart air movement. Um, positive energy buildings can definitely play a role in reducing the stress on the energy grid infrastructure, um, leading up to 70% self-consumption uh, self, uh, rate and uh, um, cons construction and material aspects and therefore uh, embodied impact can significantly influence the overall life cycle impact. And therefore it is, it's very important to apply a CA analysis in the decision-making process. Um, next, I will finally acknowledge, like to acknowledge all the partners that are participating in the project and thank you for your attention. Uh, please find here the link of our website and feel free to visit it and drop us uh, um, an email whenever you need uh, further information. Thank you. Anna Maria, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to hear uh, how far Cultural Lead Team has uh, come so far we look forward to the next year and conclusion of of your project and we we are very excited to to hear about your final results in uh, in some other uh, occasions uh, mm -hmm. similar to uh, Ana Maria's cultural e project we will present today another horizon 2020 project called beam speed but to do that we have to go from italy to berlin to our dear uh, professor Timo Hartmann from the Technical University of Berlin. Timo, welcome. It's a great uh, pleasure to have you with us. Uh, the floor is yours. We are uh, very excited to hear about Beam Speed. Yeah, thank you so much, Marco, for having us. And it's a, a great pleasure and, of course, also an honor to present our project here. Um, waiting for the slides. Yeah, hey. Um, oh. Um, it moved to the right a little bit, but um, I want to talk about um, the results of the BIM Speed project today, um, where we try to really um, think about um, developing cloud-based platforms to support the renovation of, of buildings. Um, maybe we can jump into the next slide right away. Um, I'm going to have content not only from the BIM Speed project here, but also from a project called P2Endure. Um, that was the predecessor of um, BIM Speed. Um, both projects were funded by the European Union with a significant amount of, of budget. Um, both projects are finished, uh, P2 and 2 in 2020, um, BIM Speed at 2022 last year. Um, and we see 
one nice thing of these European projects is, and that's why I'm always motivated and so so thrilled to work work on these. Is you can start working in really innovative, collaborative um, environments together. So I'm a professor at the university, but we work together with a lot of SMEs on these projects, industrial partners, um, higher education and research. Um, um, organizations and also public organizations and non-profit organizations so one of the nice things is that we really can create innovation ecosystems around these projects and um, i'm going to present a little bit the outcomes of one of these you know innovation um, outcomes or, or projects that we had and um, can we go to the next slide please um a little bit of a background so um we know that renovation in europe um is really important. Buildings um, use 40% of the energy consumption in Europe. And we have a problem we dealing with a very old building stock. So most of our buildings were um, built before 1990 um, and quite a good amount before 1960 when building energy performance standards had not been published. Um, most of it is re residential. Um, and we do renovation, of course, continuously, not too slow. I think the renovation rate is about 2%. One can calculate for themselves and project what that means for our energy goals when we need to reduce for 40%. Um, but um, most of the renovations we do don't lead to a large energy re reduction, most of them only to, for 0 to 30%. Um, we already had that in the introduction. Um, we have this thing launched the renovation wave in Europe, which is a really important measure to really push the renovation that is required to reach our energy goals. Um, so we need to improve the energy efficiency of buildings, but that will hopefully also stimulate great investments, boost job creations in the sector, address social aspects related to energy poverty and living conditions that we are even facing much more prominent after the projects went out um, with um, the problems that we have in Ukraine and Russia. Um, so overall, maybe to the next slide, um, this big claim, we have a huge market for renovation in Europe. So by 2010, so already quite some time ago, um, the market we have in architectural construction and everything that's supplied for renovation has surpassed the construction of new buildings. And so we still need to push this much more, but there's also huge possibilities for innovation and market-driven um, um, entrepreneurial efforts in this area. Um, can we move to the next slide, please? Um, but we have big problems on these renovation projects. And this is something we figured out on P2 Endure and wanted to solve on, on BIM Speed. So one problem is why is it so hard to scale these renovation efforts is because building stocks in europe are largely different right so here are examples from buildings in the netherlands and buildings in denmark and you can imagine to renovate these um there's no one size fits all solution easily possible so each project needs to be individualized um, can we go to the next slide um on top of that other than a new construction, renovation projects have much, much more uh, stakeholders that need to be involved. So we're talking really about a very complex local business network that needs to be aligned on these individualized demonstration projects. So every project needs to involve like a new set of people and um, these people need to interact in a very complex network. And then next slide, please. Um, and that leads to, this is um, one of the outcomes of the BIM Speed project. It looks very messy um, and you're not supposed to read all of it, but I wanted to show this because these are all, um, we call these use cases that we identified on BIM Speed where different people working together on renovation projects need to exchange information to do one of the tasks, right? And so that's one of the big problems we face on these renovation projects, you have it individualized. Every project needs to exchange with different people, different information, and then there's this large amount of different use cases where people would need to um, exchange information. And that's when we, um, what we wanted to address on the, or what we addressed on the BIM Speed project. So if we move to the next slide, 
um, we need to have some sort of a cloud-based uh, information management platform that allows to be custom tailored to specific renovation projects that allows to integrate all stakeholders um, and that makes all of these use cases and the information required for these use cases available. Um, we need to have a set of interoperable tools that work with the information on the platform. And then, of course, we need to have much more validated and standardized procedures for implementing renovation solutions that really can guarantee the energy performance while maintaining the image bits comfort based on such a platform and based on these interoperable tools. And so this was kind of, you know, what we did on BIM Speed. So we demonstrated how all stakeholders in the housing renovation market can be supported with such an ecosystem platform. We developed it on what we call technology readiness level six to seven. So we, we could show that it works on the subsystem level um, on this project and now you know, we try to continue or try to find or, or motivate people to move it up and to more commercial solutions. But next slide, please. Um, I show a couple of results of this platform. So what we did in the project, I would say we paved the way by demonstrating how a cloud platform could look like. So if we move to the next slide, um, you kind of see parts of the cloud-based platform it's based on a French solution by the French government, Crocky, which is like an information management platform for construction. We custom tailored it to buildings. Um, you can maintain your renovation projects. You can invite people. You can keep files and data there um, that you want to. But also very important, what you see on the lower hand, you can actually um, integrate dedicated apps. So the platform also serves as an app store that allows to bring use cases um, um, to the users of the platform, but also allows all type of different um, digital players that provide solutions on the for the construction market to integrate with the platform. Um, can we move to the next slide? Right, and based on this um, initial architecture for the platform, we then on BIM Speed went on and demonstrated um, illustrative apps that could really support the renovation project over the life cycle, right? So we, I, I term this here to start the race um, in the BIM speed metaphor. So if we go to the next slide, um, can we go to the next slide, please? Yeah, thank you so much. So, so here you see, um, this is the final version of TL7 of the platform that we um, created, where you see we integrated a lot of different apps um, going through all stages that you need to consider in a renovation cycle from assessing existing buildings, understanding the GIS data that exists around the building, looking at whether that exists, um, doing supporting um, different measurements and different status assessment methods onto um, the design phases where we start thinking about um, what kind of building information modeling tools you can look. We have libraries for products integrated, um, moving on to different simulation tools, um, building performance, energy simulations that all support the design. And then um, on the right-hand side, moving all the way to the construction where we can manage construction activities and the real installation activities. And so each of these are different apps that we developed on BIM Speed and that we integrated in the platform and that can seamlessly work together and exchange information together. Can we move to the next slide, please? Um, and then one thing that we also showed on BIM Speed is that you know once you have these platforms and the, and the standard way of apps, you can actually innovate much further, right? So. Um, I call this here in the BIM Speed metaphor, we also did some stunts on the project by developing some innovative apps, um, for example, for AI support. So if you go to the next slide, you see one of the apps that we integrated, which is basically the platform, of course, can store a great amount of pictures and photos from um, a building. And we developed a, a machine learning tool that could auto automatically identify um, different um, building system components that are installed in the building, right? Um, as, as just an example, uh, how advanced AI solutions um, can then leverage information of these platforms. Um, can we move to the next slide? Um, so we had a race. Um, we developed this platform on TL7 and um, now, you know, 
we would be really glad of the BIM speed team, of course, to see what happens or that, that some of the ideas are picked up. And so if we move to the next slide, um, while we developed dissemination and explanation results that can be used to show our ideas, to learn about our ideas, we demonstrated it on 12 projects across Europe. Already said we have 10 illustrative apps that can be used by software companies to get a feeling how an app for such a platform could look like. Um, we formalized 20 plus of these large scale use cases. We developed training materials. And we even had a competition where people used our platform and showed that it can use. Um, but you know, this is of course not yet enough to move to a commercial solution for the European market. And so I have on my last slide, if we switch to the last slide, um, a couple of open questions, or you know, um, maybe uh, a search for engagement partners that want to um, spin this idea further with us. Um, so the question is really, what does it take to establish a cloud platform and the ecosystem for building renovation really commercially on the on the European market? And so some questions to answer or to think about, and hopefully we find partners that are willing to still think with us about this is what is required for the scope of a broad platform. We know we know is it for renovation of buildings, all type of renovation projects should we um, move also to infrastructure. So we only looked at buildings. Other questions, of course, who can provide such a platform, who can manage, maintain, market, finance it. Um, and then one of the big questions, of course, we are not the only um, platform that can make information available. We have large scale competitors, usually from the US market. Um, Autodesk is one of the partners, right? So um, one question is, can and should we um, compete with such existing platforms? Um, so a couple of um, questions, basically, um, to, to further the innovation and, and, and maybe move it to really um, market-based solutions. I believe we need one in Europe for the renovation wave, um, but hopefully we can move forward with this a little bit after the project. Um, I guess the next slide is the final slide. And then um, thank you for having me again. Timo, thank you, thank you very much. I'm sure that your uh, research work, your innovations, will trigger someone's interest in the audience, and maybe this is a good, uh, good uh, occasion to attract uh, new partners for some new uh, research and innovation work. And we wish you uh, best of luck in your further in your further work. Uh, Big thanks to uh, the speakers so far, Victoria, Anna Maria, and Timo. Uh, we will now move to the scientific team of the European Commission's Joint, Re Joint Research Center. The GRC provides uh, independent evidence-based science and knowledge uh, supporting EU policies. Uh, therefore, their integral presentation uh, that will follow uh, is uh, about current trends in policy research related to mitigation and decarbonization of the building sector. We have four colleagues uh, with us today, Carmen Madut, Dr. Giorgio Scioni, Dr. Anna Martinez, and Dr. Jonas Carlson, they will, that will, uh, uh, without interruption, uh, uh, deliver uh, deliver their uh, integral presentation. It's a great pleasure to have you here uh, as one of the co-organizers co of this session, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Good afternoon to everyone. At the jo Joint Research Center, we explore various key aspects of building decarbonization, with a focus on energy efficiency principle first, always, because energy efficiency goes beyond uh, energy saving and money savings. It can alleviate energy poverty, reduce air pollution, improve health, mitigate seismic risk, and other benefits. We are looking into how new buildings and retrofits affect the environment, aiming to make them more eco-friendly. Uh, to this end, we are investigating the introduction of a decarbonization indicator into the European Common Framework or the methodology, the cost optimal methodology, to set energy performance levels for buildings. This indicator and the methodology revised will guide users in identifying those energy efficiency solutions with lowest emissions, but that will bring 
high energy savings. Next slide, please. We also uh, look at uh, how to create better indoor climates. So for instance, we identify vulnerable European regions based on historical use of asbestos, a carcinogenic fiber. The building a renovation wave with this intention to increase the renovation rate and the depth of renovation may trigger asbestos release because buildings that are in need of energy renovation today may contain asbestos products. So our prioritization may show where screening before any intervention work may be a priority. Also, we link the, the estimated quantities of asbestos with seismic risk because many existing buildings are not compliant with seismic requirements, making them vulnerable to earthquakes. And earthquakes may trigger asbestos release because <clears throat> during uh, earthquake, asbestos fibers may be released and so can increase asbestos exposure. So our prioritization can guide renovation to increase energy efficiency, improve health, uh, create better indoor condition, and also resilience to earthquakes. Uh, now I will hand over to, to George. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, old buildings in the European Union are structurally weaker and consume a lot of energy because the requirements were lower some decades ago. So it is difficult for national authorities to develop renovation plans because the seismic, climatic, and socioeconomic conditions and the building characteristics vary significantly. So within a pilot project, we produced the guidelines, data, and user-friendly impact evaluation tools to inform bespoke renovation plans and uh, in this project, we demonstrated how integrated renovation is much more beneficial than separate interventions. Next slide. Uh, the new European Bauhaus initiative aims to connect the European Green Deal to our living spaces and experiences based on three principles, beautiful, sustainable, and together. The Joint Research Center is developing a self-assessment methodology and tool for buildings and living spaces that will allow to assess whether a project, where a project stands and how the new European Bauhaus values translate into a project. Next slide. Uh, smart buildings and infrastructures have a big potential to improve energy efficiency, prevent failures, and to reduce costs during operation. However, there are limitations, for example, lack of data and interoperability with cities. Our work focuses on the use of sensors, building information models, artificial intelligence, and automated digital twin technologies to optimize design, operations, and performance. Next slide. Uh, these strategic technologies can support the twin transition in different ways. To monitor building dynamics and collect data, provide indicators for decision-making, facilitate innovation, and support data analysis and building operations. Uh, with the next slide, uh, I close with an example of how smart buildings can be integrated into smart cities. This is actually a real world test case where more than 400 sensors are installed uh, in a real building and using machine learning, Internet of Things and the digital twins, these sensors support the monitoring and improvement of the building's energy performance. Thank you, and I pass the floor to my colleague, Ana Martinez. Thank you very much, uh, Georgos. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm very happy to share with you the latest information on the work we are doing at the Joint Research Center of the European Commission on the Digital Building Stock Model. I think we need to pass on to the next slide. 
the reason we're doing this is because uh, when we want to understand the impact that some of these measures and improvements on buildings can have at EU scale, we need to have a very good idea of how the building stock looks like in the European Union. Uh, we need to measure progress towards the decarbonization of buildings somehow, and detailed digital data of the building stock is key for this. But if we rely only on cadastral and authoritative sources uh, that are available at the moment, it looks rather fragmented and heterogeneous. Um, so we need now more innovative ways to collect this data. We have recently started to work on the creation of a pan-European digital building stock model uh, with energy-related features, using a combination of open existing data sources and also machine learning techniques on satellite imagery to be able to work at EU scale. Uh, this requires uh, a lot of research, uh, and the aim is to produce a map as comprehensive as possible that can be openly accessed uh, by citizens and policymakers to guide investment programs to support energy policies uh, such as the Energy Renovation Wave or the Energy Performance of Buildings Directive. But we are seeing also a lot of interest from areas such as uh, disaster risk management, for, for instance. Uh, next slide, please. To get a bit more into detail of what we are aiming at here, I will show this overview plan of what we are looking at now. First of all, our goal is to be able to zoom in a particular city, uh, the neighborhood, and to identify each individual building. A first version of the identification of the building footprints or polygons is already publicly available, as I will show next. And in parallel, we are working on some other uh, building features that we hope will be available soon, such as the building height, uh, the compactness of the building, understanding this as the surface to volume ratio, the building type, meaning as a starting point, the distinction between residential or non-residential. Um, we are doing a more accurate estimate of the EU solar rooftop potential with PVGs, um, and what we would like to get in the future is also the building age and the rooftop type of the building using machine learning models. All these with the aim to feed into our research uh, towards the estimation of the energy consumption of buildings. Next slide, please. What is publicly available now is this first version of the building footprints for all 27 EU member states. It's not perfect, but we believe it's one of the most comprehensive sources at EU scale, thanks to the combination of three different open data sources. OpenStreetMap with higher priority when available, represented in blue here. Microsoft Buildings with second priority when available, in red here. And a vectorized form of the European Settlement Map, or ESM, from the Global Human Settlement Layer, uh, which is represented in green here. Not all areas look like this in terms of coverage. For instance, large parts of Spain, especially in rural areas, are large, largely covered by ESM. And we are working now on the incorporation of cadastral data when available for some EU countries because it is the only, uh, the, it's the only one available. Uh, we aim to release this uh, new version at the beginning of next year if everything goes well. And next slide, please. So we are seeing a paradigm shift here where data aggregated at national or even regional scale is not enough for certain purposes and where more granular data is needed, uh, sometimes to be able to aggregate at different levels, such as per neighborhoods. The effort to homogenize authoritative data with initiatives like INSPIRE is definitely in the right direction. And we aim to incorporate this when, when it is feasible and as it becomes gradually more available, but we also need other innovative solutions in the meantime to fill the data gaps. The reality is that there are certain regions and countries that provide great data sets available on buildings and others that are still a bit uh, behind. We would like to incorporate socioeconomic and demographic features in the future to help us, for instance, better tackle energy poverty connected to buildings. And our philosophy in general is to release data fast and improve often because we think that in this way other teams will also be able to benefit from the path uh, we've already walked and the provided data, even if not perfect, uh, could be useful for certain use cases, especially when nothing else is, is available at EU scale. And last but not least, uh, we are aiming to join forces with other teams doing similar research and other national and regional public authorities and institutes collected, collecting relevant related data. So if you're interested, uh, please don't hesitate to, to reach out to us. And now I'll pass on the floor to, to my colleague, Johan. Yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My presentation focuses on recent work on heat pumps. Heat pumps is uh, are one of the vital technologies to reach the EU decarbonization targets in the heating and cooling sector. The EU has set ambitious targets for heat pumps that gradually have been strengthened. In addition to reach the decarbonization targets in the heating and cooling sectors, the consumption 
for space heating, it ranges from zero up to nearly 90%. So it's a big span. Um, countries with large uh, gas and oil consumption include Luxembourg, Hungary, and the Netherlands, while countries with low consumptions are Malta, Sweden, and Portugal. The penetration of heat pumps can be seen on the right-hand side, and it varies greatly also across the EU. Um, heat pumps are mostly deployed in Northern Europe, like Sweden, Finland, and Estonia. In 2022, the EU added 3 million heat pumps, and that meant that we had reached a stock of 22 million units. The number of heat pumps grew on average by 11% from 2011 to 2020. Uh, the sales boomed in 2022 by 42% uh, due to the high gas prices, and then it has slowed down a bit in 2023. Next slide, please. To illustrate some of the scientific aspects of our work, I'm presenting uh, this chart which demonstrates the components of a model that we developed uh, to assess the impact of launching 30 million heat pumps by 2030. I will not go into the details due to the time constraints, uh, but the model considered factors such as the most common building typologies in the EU member states, climate conditions, uh, hourly temperature, temperature variations, solar irradiation, economics, and more. Next slide, please. Some results from the study were that if 30 million oil and gas boilers would be replaced by heat pumps, the gas consumption in those buildings would be reduced by 36%. This estimate took into account that fossil fuels would still be used for the electricity production, uh, and that electricity is used in those heat pumps. CO2 emissions would be reduced by 28%. In uh, 2021, 21.5% of all space heating systems sold in the EU were heat pumps. So that also means that there are still many fossil-based systems being installed. Um, according to our estimate in this study, about 40% of the buildings can install a heat pump without renovations. Older buildings should also combine it with additional measures, such as improving thermal insulation of walls, roof, windows, and floor, and maybe uh, change the radiators and piping system. We also analyzed the competitive situation of EU companies in the heat pump sector, and it can be concluded that the European companies are in a stronger uh, position. However, imports have risen in recent years, uh, particularly from China. Next slide, please. And the GRC currently provides support to DGN regarding the heat pump action plan. Uh, this initiative will create a platform between the European Commission, the member states and stakeholders to facilitate the deployment of heat pumps. It covers a large range of issues, uh, including available skills in the workforce and the availability of financing. Uh, the targeted adoption of the heat pump action plan is in early 2024. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Johan. Thank you very much, colleagues. Seven speakers in less than an hour in the session of the European Union side event on research and innovation for the decarbonization of buildings. Uh, thank you all for your contribution. We were in Italy, in Bolzano, in Ispra, in Berlin, in Brussels. I heard we have international audience. Uh, thank you all for behind the scenes for excellent organization and cooperation. As a last final uh, uh, final step of this session, I will ask the participants to try to give their contribution in the Slido uh, poll question uh, that is uh, the following one. What is, in, or, in your view, the key non-monetary benefit of building renovations? As a closure of this session, feel free to enter your, to enter your uh, opinion. And uh, once again, thank you. Thank you very much.
following of course the link uh, slido.com and uh, cop28 uh, on we have first uh, response it's environment very clear someone else safety healthy planet comfort and security health reducing co2 emissions well-being emission reduction excellent quality of life comfort amazing very uh, colorful diverse answers but all of them quite relevant thank you very much for your time for your patience we are closing the session now and we hope to see you uh, again best regards to everybody thank you very much